And you're right, one of the keys that will unlock this is avatars that truly represent us. For example, it's now possible to change your virtual outfit whenever you want. Cool as that is, it's the face. Expressions, eye contact, slight motions that is most quintessentially human. Things like raising an eyebrow, squinting, uh, widening my eyes, or scrunching my nose. You know, these avatars are way better at capturing those subtleties that define physical interaction. Hey everyone, it's good to be here today. Right now, we're at the beginning of the next chapter for the internet, and it's the next chapter for our company too. The defining quality of the metaverse will be a feeling of presence, like you're right there with another person or in another place. Feeling truly present with another person is the holy grail of social technology. And that's why we're so focused on building this. You're going to be able to get together with friends and family, work, learn, play, shop, create, as well as completely new experiences that don't really fit with how we think about computers or phones today. We're going to move across experiences on different devices, with augmented reality glasses to stay present in the physical world, virtual reality to be fully immersed, and phones and computers to jump in from existing platforms. We can already experience glimpses of the metaverse today through virtual and augmented reality, but this is just the beginning. Our hope is that within the next decade, the metaverse will reach a billion people, host hundreds of billions of dollars of digital commerce, and support jobs for millions of creators and developers. And importantly, enable better social experiences than anything that exists today. Now, this isn't something that we can or would build alone. The metaverse will be built by creators and developers making new experiences and interoperable digital goods that unlock a massive creative economy. And of course, it's going to require big advancements in connectivity, compute, technology, and hardware to bring all of this to life. So we're going to be able to teleport anywhere and be with anyone no matter how far apart we physically are. And you're right, one of the keys that will unlock this is avatars that truly represent us. So. Last year, we showed you early progress on full-body codec avatars. Ben, what sets codec avatars apart from other high-quality avatars that you might have seen is that they're fully drivable. So that means that they're not limited to preset movements or expressions. This is an avatar that you can control live in real time with no need to render or export video. Of course, securing your avatar will be critical. We're already thinking about things like encryption and tying your avatar to an authenticated account. But beyond privacy, we've continued to develop this technology. For example, it's now possible to change your virtual outfit whenever you want. Cool as that is, it's the face. Expressions, eye contact, slight motions that is most quintessentially human. So I made one of myself. Now we've made them a lot more expressive. And not just simple things like looking left, right, up, down but also the nonverbal cues that we rely on to communicate with each other and understand tone. Things like raising an eyebrow, squinting, uh, widening my eyes, or scrunching my nose. You know, these avatars are way better at capturing those subtleties that define physical interactions. They're just much more natural. And being able to control the lighting on the avatars adds another dimension of life to them. When we move the light around, you can see how it interacts with my hair, it reflects on my skin, and you can even see it in my eyes. Now, these are awesome, but they also take a really long time to generate. So we're working on something that's a lot quicker for people to use. 